Welcome back YouTube. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the, the self that we had yesterday and really answer the million dollar question. Is this a pre-having sell-off like as far as for historically, or is this based off of the pending war in Iran or the conflict that's going on in the, uh, the Middle East? So in my opinion, um, I, I think it's a kind of a combination of both, right? Um, what we've been talking about initially on the channel was the potential that we couldn't get that aggressive or we wouldn't get that aggressive sell-off that we've seen in the past just simply because of the amount that the community was growing and investing, right? And we talked about the three things that could uh, over overturn that, right? Which would be a whale dumping, obviously like a, a major BTC sell-off due to some type of a catalyst or a macro event. And this is certainly a macro event. So um, the biggest thing is, did the whales, did people, did, typically when they recoup those profits uh, right before the halving, we have that big dump and then we have the halving and the market kind of takes off. Um, was this kind of like the catalyst that they needed? Not saying that it was uh, it's a correlation or anything, but was this the catalyst that they needed to make those positions to do those swaps? Uh, we looked at, we're going to take a look here at longs um, in a second. But I wanted to point that out because I think that's kind of important to set the stage here. We're comparing the correlation between the price action that we've seen and history, right? Um, the biggest thing is that we also have institutional money, a lot of institutional money that comes in now the market, especially around bull runs and, and bear runs, especially during that transition. And they will certainly reallocate profits if they uh, feel that there's something pending or there's some there's a big uh, catalyst for a long-term issue or something like that you can see a, a rebalancing of portfolios as well so we're going to talk about all of that in uh, this video uh, the biggest thing i want to talk about while i'm on coin market cap before we get into charts and longs and shorts and all that kind of good stuff is we'll see here that most of the coins have sold off but i wanted to i, I just posted this in my discord who owns Ton Coin? This coin literally popped up in the top 10 out of nowhere. And it's about to recover 100% from the last two um, from the last two days. Like it's faring better than any coin in the top 10 on the 24 hour. Uh, better than Bitcoin, better than Ethereum. And it's down 2% on the hour, but it's only 1% down based off for the day. Like, where did this coin come from? I'm sorry. I was just, just talking about this in my group. I'm going to rather do some investigating and figure out who owns this and, and what, because something strange here. It's literally, um, literally outperforming everything in the top 10 here, especially as far as for the total amount that it was hit. Um, I was looking at that as well. And then the recovery. It's something, I don't know, something strange here. It just kind of popped up out of nowhere and now it's, you know, doing so well. So we'll see. But um, I wanted to point out here, yes, everything, this is one of the reasons I said um, portfolio rebalancing. Nothing has broke trend. Um, we do have a larger number of retailers in, uh, in Dogecoin. But if we take a look here, when it comes to having uh, portfolio rebalancing, if you look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Solana, uh, XRP, Doge, Cardano, all of them are showing the similar pattern. So when I look at, you know, as far as the allocations and why coins are getting hit hard compared to others, I look for a break in trend or a break in the formation. Right now, the formations are all almost identical. You can copy and paste these red lines here. You can copy and paste them. And they are literally like identical from Doge to XRP, everything. So it lets me know that there's not a big divergence in between uh, the institutional capital or retail coming out because of fear and stuff. This is a uh, a rebalancing and it's not. And obviously, you know, Doge can get hit harder because it has the highest number of retailers and it's not going to have as much capital as like a Bitcoin or Ethereum from uh, institutional money. So if things got tight, if they had to pick, then obviously they would uh, hold on more to Bitcoin or Ethereum. But the, for, for right now, they're just simply playing percentages, which is why we are getting these Cut, copy and paste um, chart signals here based off of allocations and whether that be for good when the market is running or for panic when the market is going down there's you know they're still running their percentages x amount percent to bitcoin x amount percent to ethereum and x amount percent to you know doge for example so that's continuing to happen so not a big divergence there um, we're going to take a look here 
at longs and shorts, liquidations, all that good stuff. I believe that's really important. Now, I've just posted this on X. Longs got uh, have got spanked in the last 24 hours. Look at this here. So compared to short 7.5, 21.2 compared to um, the, the short range. So longs definitely took a beating here. But if you take a look at the ratio, they're still coming in at almost two to or three to one. It, it's it's very interesting here. Um, you have, what is this, on the five minutes, 69.53, 30 minutes, 70.59 to 29, one hour, 70 to 29, four hours, 70 to 29, and one day, 71 to 28. So interesting enough, even though you have this, uh, this push down, I think open interest are probably less than a billion now. Yeah, 826, so down 17.93 on the 24 hour. They are, even though they just got pushed out of the market or just uh, sw swap their positions, they're still buying. And I think overall, uh, even when you have kind of like what we we're talking about when I started this video, when I was looking at uh, giving you the, the top three reasons we can have like those big push downs, is you know, which one of those are going to be a long term callus? Are, is this, does this historically have a, uh, a probability of preventing bull runs? No, it has, you know, news has shock value. You know, there's some people out there, some traders, investors that simply trade the news. So um, if you had, if you caught wind of that uh, attack yesterday, especially as it was first happening and you were able to kind of get in to anything like a push, uh, a put, or anything, then obviously you were able to make money. Now, the biggest catalyst that we're probably going to have to wait on is going to be tomorrow when the stock market opens, right? That's going to be because this happened on a weekend. Um, the stock market probably probably would have went through the floor yesterday. So we'll see how this is. These shock waves are going to allocate what happens tomorrow because we've had some time now to kind of cool off. So um, and kind of get an idea of what's going on. So the shock value. Is not going to have. It's not going to be a, a fresh in the stock market, right? So we're going to have. It's going to be like, <clears throat> like forty eight hours later, right? So the um, that shock value was, you know, unfortunately taken out on crypto because it, you know, that was the only, you know, it's a twenty four seven market. So that's one of the uh, unique things about the, the the crypto market here. We'll see what the allocation is, what rebalancing looks like for the stock market tomorrow, um, but. Well, I think the liquidity pulls and everything to free up the the cash, but just to kind of see is this going to you know escalate or anything like that. I think that's certainly what's going on. Um, I think that we are testing some of those those levels here, and it kind of just aligns time wise with them being able to get the asset down uh, lower, and, and we're still in those historic ranges for pre having sell offs now. The unfortunately, the, the the hypothesis I was testing when I said that we potentially can not have that aggressive sell off because of the amount of people coming into the market, the amount of new wallets. Unfortunately, we will not have the answer to that organically because of this situation here, because I, I believe the market's probably going to sell tomorrow as well. And I was really hoping to gather data on that uh, over this run to see you know, if that can kind of change history and, and we kind of shorten those dips a little bit prior to pre having, but then we have this event and now we're not going to be able to, we're not, we're not going to know, right? Because we're, we're having macro events here. That's kind of, that certainly influenced the market here. So now we are, it, it's two different things here versus seller sentiment versus something macro where they're like, Oh, we need to free up capital. Right. So the unique thing is uh, we are bouncing off of the 15, which is our would be our next major level of support here um, after the 18 range where the bottom of this zone is around 15. So we're bouncing where we're supposed to. We got the push down here, but uh, to around like 14, 14, 13. But we, it was immediately bought up. The candle hasn't closed. Um, we never even here when we went down to around 13. This is what I meant by uh, if you've been following the channel, when you're able to buy it in the zones below um, where the <clears throat> where the equilibrium price is, typically it gets bought up relatively quickly. They bought people bought aggressively at 13 cent and it pushed all the way. It pushed up another two cent. 
So the market is not trying to hear that. Uh, that it's, it's not trying to tolerate those being priced in at 13 cent right now. It, that this is the wick is longer than the candle. So that tells you where the market is trying to price in um, the the actual coin here. And then here they're trying to do another push down to around 14 and that was bought up again. And so now we're back at the 15 range here. So which is at literally the bottom line for this zone here. And this is the 15 to uh, 18 zone, right? So as far as for reactions and uh, zone wise, that it's doing exactly what it would, um, what it would do if, if we were to get an organic push down this market and then this, this zone, which was push very strongly off of the bottom and try and seek equilibrium uh, near around this 18 mark, which is what, which is what we're seeing here overall. For Bitcoin, let's talk about this here because I was hoping, I posted this on X, I was hoping I was wrong about this uh, because I did the average of around the sell-offs and that would put us around $58,000, $59,000 for historically the pre-having sell-off average if you if you combine them or the last few uh, uh, bull runs, um, you'll, you'll get somewhere around like 58, 59,000. So I put this market here because we got a retest. Uh, we got a push off, excuse me, um, here back in early March. And if you did the math, it came in right there. I said, okay, how great is that? Now, what's the likelihood of we'll um, go down and test those numbers? And again, I was saying that I believe it, we have a strong chance of not doing that because the community has grown because of the amount of money that's coming into the market. And this is a more organic run. It's not driven off of hype and hopium. Uh, we're running more so off of fundamentals. And then, of course, we get the macro uh, curveball here. But the, the great thing is we did not come all the way down. We did push past this first level of support because if you guys have been watching like some of our older videos, you know, I said we had two levels to get before we got to that around that historic average. We did break through this one, but the second one certainly caught, right? Right around that 61, 60,000 mark that certainly caught and we got the rejection right so that's that's a beautiful thing about having uh, some levels of support at least close to each other is you can kind of pump the brakes on it a little bit instead of just having a huge gap to fill and um, filling it down so you obviously you don't want those giant candles uh, for those of you who have been following me for a while you know how i feel about gaps gaps up gap down they fill so if you can have these this is a perfect example of why you want the stair steps uh, excuse me, why you want the steps instead of the uh, uh, the escalator or the rocket ship is because this is, it gives you an opportunity to pump the brakes a lot sooner because if this was a, let's just say this was a giant candle from, you know, 64, 60, let's say 61 to 70, let's say that was one huge candle. You'd have a $10,000 gap fill, right? But because we have the brakes, we had the uh, the push here and it kind of it, it pushed back up to consolidate at around 64 but then it pushed down again to around 62 and then it bounced again right so you want that level so at least it, there is some resistance there where people are feel comfortable coming into the market because that's already aligns with their average that already aligns with positions they've taken options that they've taken they feel a lot <clears throat> excuse me they feel a lot more comfortable coming into the market uh, at those levels versus um, waiting and saying that, okay, well, this is a $10,000 fill. I'm going to wait until we get closer to the bottom. So you're able to take, kind of gather new investors much faster when you have those uh, those levels a lot closer. And that's one of the examples that we're seeing here. For Doge, it is similar price action um, The because we, we did get some decent runs, bigger runs, but as far as for candle wise, but it wasn't um, enough to kind of do like a, a big uh, drop here because right now we're pretty much trading uh, this zone pretty much filled, right? But then we got the rejection here because they tried to actually push it down, you know, two zones, but we bounced even earlier than that initial push down that we got back in what was this early March as well, right? And we got that long wick here, got literally pushed back into the other zone, bouncing, pushed it down lower than the 72 day um ema right and so we got this push down here but we pushed literally back up into the this zone here between 15 and 18 so a little slight difference here but the candles are a lot um uh, bigger because we're trading zone to zone compared to having those two supporting lines so this will kind of be like the 
the first zone that we compared it to in Bitcoin, where it got that push through, did something similar. And now we're catching around the 15, right? If you want to just kind of overlap them and kind of compare the similarities, that would be the uh, the similar uh, price action. Let's take a look here at shorts because I don't believe maybe they spiked, but I don't believe they would have been able to catch wind early enough to capitalize off of it. Yeah, so this is today. Um, yesterday, they this, this is a very interesting candle here. Yesterday, they tried to come in and then they liquidated a lot, um, didn't hold anything, closed down on the day. Um, so, so basically, when you have news or shock value, they'll try and jump in to try and ride that wave down. And so now they're, they're saying, OK, well, I believe this is potentially it can go down. So now you're seeing what is this? 80 percent on the day um, that they're up. But yesterday they were trying to pile in to catch some of the news, but then it rebounded. So they got scared and closed out of their position. So now they're trying to assess the situation and hope that we get some shock value news from tomorrow, some rebalancing so that they can try and capitalize off of a, a, another push down here. So that's why we're seeing the, the green candle. So this is what I meant by trading the news, right? So matter of fact, let's trade BTC shorts. I imagine sometimes they're smarter than yeah, slight <laughs> move slightly up yesterday, but then they're coming out. BTC short. I tell you, it's a different mindset that compared to the people that short these coins here. I, I will say here, BTC shorts um, do seem to possess a higher level of education, especially on fundamentals, because they get wrecked a lot less than the Dogecoin shorters. But overall, fifteen to eighteen is the um, the zone that we have for now. We're going to have to see as far as for institutional money coming in because if you're being honest that's what drives the the bull market anyway retailers aren't getting together and saying hey let's put eight trillion dollars into crypto this um this run here so we can all you know moon the coins that's that's not what happens here so we're gonna have to see how this uh this macro event plays out it's one of the big three that influences the market so and that kind of is going to tell when uh, the money is going to come in and how much is going to come in and ultimately where it goes. Um, so those are going to be some of the big things that we're going to uh, have to monitor here. And we're not going to have some of those answers, uh, at least today. We're not, I know we're not. So over the next few days, I say 48, 72 hours, we're going to have a much clearer picture. Uh, the biggest thing to watch tomorrow is how the stock market actually responds. And if there is a big rebalancing in that uh in that position here if there's a big rebalancing in the uh the stock market then we could see uh, some a potential more liquidity pull from the crypto market as well so that's going to be one of the things here that we have in the macro events and that's one of the things about investing is you don't know you can't control the macros and how uh they play uh into the market what we can do is look at the overall evaluations of the coin and look at uh, historically and say, okay, well, this is uh, a blip in time here versus the the instances that are going on. Will this coin um, or investment, even if you're looking at stocks, will this appreciate over time here? Will this appreciate during the, um, the 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 bull run, right? And with this happening here, we may get a we may get the 18 month bull run, right? So instead of the um, the shorter bull run because everyone's coming in, we could have this big recalibration here because of the macro event and we actually end up getting a normal 18 month bull run so this bull run could certainly continue into 2025 here if we're kind of getting this recalibration <laughs> because of the macro event so again very interesting things going on uh overall is this is this the end of the bull run does is crypto dead is it never going to run again like no that's that's foolishness i've been seeing a lot of that i even posted that on my in my uh my comment section because they were like all the coin, the entire market sold off. Bitcoin was down like ten thousand dollars at one point. And you know what they were saying? They were saying Doge's dead. I'm like, okay, that's an interesting, interesting choice of words and interesting perspective here, considering how you're overlooking the entire crypto market being selling off identically at the same time and producing identical chart patterns to single out Dogecoin. But you know, it, it's just people project their, you know, they have a hatred for Elon. They have a hatred. For Dogecoin to have a hatred for Tesla. And so anything that was even remotely resemble success or failure, they jump on it the first chance that they get. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. So 
and it's completely foolishness unless there's a divergence I mean, if the entire crypto market is taking off and everything is going good and um you know doge is stagnant or going the opposite way then you say stuff like that but as long as the entire market is trending together producing identical patterns don't be silly with that being said uh that is my update as far as on price action what i believe is going on what i believe is happening um, we are still pushing for 100,000 subscribers before Bitcoin gets to 100,000. So we may have a little bit more time now. So if you can help with that and by subscribing to the channel, I appreciate it. Uh, let me know your thoughts about the war and the uh, the impact on the stock market. What are you doing now at these price point? I would love to hear that kind of weigh that throughout the community. Um, like, share the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.